Yes, so today is an exciting Sunday because it is our annual 545. So if you are one of the 545, could you come down and take your seats just so that the transitions are quick and easy and preferably in order, um, just so that we can... Um, keep the ship moving, as it were. Um, we love doing a five for five. This is where we have five speakers speaking for five minutes on one topic. Um, and it's just a great way for us as a family to hear different voices in our community because God has given us all something to say, something to share for the body. And um, these five have been working hard over the last few weeks to bring a message on the theme of gratitude. Um, and they've been working with Pastor Nick. And uh, yeah, we're just really grateful for what God has put in each of these their hearts. And what we like to do on Sundays like this is because, you know, I'm sure there are plenty in the room who standing on the stage would be their worst nightmare, even though you're actually a really friendly bunch of faces to look at. Nick and I are used to it, so it doesn't really phase us, but it can be nerve wracking for these guys. So we just want to encourage them. So when we call people up, we want some love in the room so clapping cheering whatever you feel like showing love for these people because they've done a great job and they've got a great message for you this morning um i'm just going to quickly pray for them in general and then i will call the first speaker up father we just thank you that you have put something in each of us to share with the body but lord we just pray for these five this morning we just thank you that you have been equipping them in these past weeks that you've given them a message to share this morning lord jesus and i just pray that you already our hearts and our minds for what you you want to say through them this morning lord jesus that their words will bless us but also challenge us lord jesus that you will do a work in our hearts by the power of your holy spirit will you just bless each of them will you calm the nerves will they remember that it's you working through them lord jesus that they are not alone up here and lord we just pray your blessing upon them in jesus name amen so our first speaker is les will you come on up <laughs> I think I need my glasses on just to be absolutely Michael, sure. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> my title is Gratitude for God's Gifts. No. What is it that um, ignites gratitude? Is it not the reception of gifts or blessings? And it's usually customary when receiving a gift to acknowledge it by a thank you card or some other means. Now, this should be true in the spiritual realm every bit as much as it is in the natural realm. Numerous times throughout the Bible, we are instructed to offer thanksgiving to God. In fact, in Psalm 136, 26 times alone, we are exhorted to do so. Now, I would say that because it's such a reoccurring theme in the scriptures, I believe that gratitude for God's gifts and blessings should be part of a believer's lifestyle. <laughs> Truly, I am grateful for God's unspeakable gift, Jesus Christ, my Savior and Redeemer, as well as those good and perfect gifts, which also come from our beneficent Heavenly Father. And I believe that text just somewhere has been up on the screen there. Now, let me now share with you my heart of gratitude in regards to some of those heavenly blessings. I'm grateful for a Christian heritage. To be raised in a Christian family in a Christian environment was a wonderful blessing. And together with this, I'm grateful for the Word of God, which was so honored and upheld during those formative years and which has been my guide throughout life. I'm also grateful for personal friendships that I have experienced in the course of my Christian life. Indeed, I thank God for caring individuals who have encouraged me in my ministry and walk with the Lord, and I also appreciate the opportunity to reciprocate this gift. I'm also grateful for those talents and skills with which God has in 
trusted me. One for which I am particularly thankful is the gift of writing and the opportunity to bless the family of God with this in recent years. And this reminds me of the ministry gifts that God has given to the church as listed there in Ephesians 4, where it states that at Christ's ascension, he gave gifts to men. Now, I'm grateful for the gift of teaching and the opportunity to uh, release this gift as well. I'm truly grateful for my years in children's ministry and the opportunity <coughs> to... Uh, influence young lives, and particularly the many summers I was um, allowed to spend counseling at kids' camp. I'm also truly grateful for the opportunity to have gone on missions trips and to minister overseas. And Oh, if only I were younger and could <laughs> do a little more of that. Yeah. In conclusion, let me then just summarize this in three points. Firstly, I'm grateful to God himself, the gift giver who bestows gifts on me. Secondly, I'm grateful to you who release your ministry gifts from my education. On this personal note, I've been here 18 months, and I thank you for how you've received me. I would I'm very grateful for Pastors Nick and Sarah and the ministry gifts they've imparted to me and for all of you as well. And I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to be a ministry gift to you as well. So now, let me challenge you, Numa Church. Consider what your ministry gifts are. Are you using them to bring blessing to the family of God and the kingdom of God? I trust you are. So, Numa Church, let's make each gathering a gala of gift giving and gratitude, and may I express to you my gratitude with a capital G. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Les. That was great. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jenny. <laughs> Good morning. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. These words are some of Paul's final encouragements to the church in Thessalonica, a new church surrounded by a culture of idol worship, all kinds of spirituality, false teachers. Sounds kind of similar to our society. Um, but he tells the church to rejoice, pray about everything, and give thanks in all circumstances. Paul knew that worship and gratitude, no matter what was going on, were the keys to this group of believers standing strong in their faith. But I think sometimes when we hear these words, we get stuck on the in all circumstances. Doesn't that seem a bit unrealistic? Paul says it's God's will for us, so essentially a command. But how can we give thanks when so often we're not grateful for the circumstances we're facing? Don't get me wrong. It's necessary, so necessary to thank God for the blessings and good circumstances. He does love to give us good gifts. But if our thanks ends there, it's, there's a real danger of thinking that God has left us or no longer loves us when circumstances turn. The only real way to anchor our lives is to get into the habit of studying the word, to find out who he has said he is, and thanking him for who he is in every circumstance. Yeah. The Psalms encourage us to give thanks to God for who he is. Psalm 7, 17, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. Psalm 95, 1 to 3, let us come before him with thanksgiving. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. Psalm 100, 4 to 5, Give thanks, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. In the midst of our sorrow or good times, we can thank God for his love, his faithfulness, his promises to be near us, to be our father, to be our helper, 
for his nature, that he's steadfast, unchanging, just, merciful. There's so many attributes of God. The more we practice speaking out God's qualities, the more it becomes second nature, and knowing and expressing gratitude for his qualities in the midst of any circumstance will help us to keep standing when the ground is shaking between beneath our feet. In my teenage years, my mom went through a long period of great depression and tried to take her own life twice. It impacted me greatly to watch my dad hold on to God and still express gratitude for God's goodness in the midst of his own great sorrow. A number of years later, this was tested in my own life when my marriage had a very difficult season. And in many ways, it looked like there was no hope. There was a song, I don't know if you know the artist Audrey Assad, but her songs impacted me deeply during that time. And some lyrics just from one of the songs was, I put all my hope in the truth of your promise. I steady my heart on the ground of your goodness. When I'm bowed down with sorrow, I will lift up your name because you are good to me. And that could be God is good. That could be you are good to me in the midst of what I'm, what I'm going through. In my own sorrow, I learned the power of worship and gratitude in declaring the attributes of God and thanking him for who he was. He is healer, steadfast, protector, comforter, powerful, and good. Amongst the inevitable, praying and pleading for God to restore and heal, I felt him gently asking me, after a period of many months, what if I don't restore your marriage? Will I still be good? Will you still thank me for who I am? What matters most was that I learned gratitude for him that did not solely depend on his answers to my prayers. He was merciful to restore our marriage. And we now have a beautiful family who I'm sure you've seen. But it was really during that time and not when circumstances got better that I started to understand what gratitude in every circumstance looks like. Yeah. Gratitude for what? That we have a steadfast God, a God who loves us an intimate God who is there in our sorrow. Yeah. It's a cliche, and I don't like cliches, but it kind of sums up that practicing gratitude is like exercising a muscle. The more you do it, the easier and more automatic it becomes. Yeah. Training our minds in gratitude towards God for who he is in amongst every circumstance will make it possible for us to do the same <coughs> when we're in difficult times because he is steadfast. Our circumstances can change in an instant. The things we thought we could trust are not certain, but God is steadfast. He does not change. He is good, and his love endures forever. And for that, we can rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. So good, Jenny. Thank you for your vulnerability. That was awesome. Next up is Ryan. I don't quite know how I'm going to follow that. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to sh share a portion of scripture from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 15. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his own heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having that Having all that you need, you will abound in every good work, as it is written. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. 
and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them in, and with everyone else. And in the prayers for you, for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surrender, surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his incredible gift. Now in this passage, you could unpack quite a bit, so I'm going to mainly focus on verses 11 and 12. When I read this, it's easy to kind of get caught up on uh, just the giving of your finances, but I feel this speaks of not just the giving of our finances, but also the t our time, our gifts, and our resources. Now, Les touched quite a bit on the gifts that were given and um, how we can use them. The Lord can use any one of these to have you meet somebody else's need that they have. And, and in verse 11, it says we are called to be generous with these in every occasion, not so that we can feel good about ourselves or receive praise, but so that praise and thanksgiving will be given back to God. Um, yeah. Now, I, I can give all kinds of examples of how I've seen this play out in my own life, whether it be through uh, my experience uh, with t the ministry of Teen Challenge or my time doing street ministry. But um, I think the best way to give an example would have been with the with last week and us uh, voting for the building that um, we're going to be going into and just how the giving that we do, whether it's been our time, our finances, and just how we tend to just give thanks to it, but we can be so focused in that moment, but we tend to forget of like the ripple effect that God's going to do with uh, our obedience and the giving of the things that we, he's blessed us with. And I, I think of even just uh, the ministries that Numa has pledged to give to, and we tend to forget about those two and just how our giving now we're giving thanks to it. The people that receive it there are giving thanks to God for it. And the, it just ripples down to the people that get affected by our giving. And time's running out really fast. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that kind of speaks into uh, verse 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. And I think that's, uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. Otherwise, I'll be up here for way too long. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. That was great. Oh. There we go. And next up, we have David. <laughs> Give it up. Thank you. All right. So God really spoke to me through... Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Uh, I'm not stealing your stuff at all. So, <laughs> uh, so it says, rejoice always, uh, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Uh, so we've all gone through valleys and hardships in life, and um, being thankful in that moment is likely not easy. However, in uh, verse 18, God calls us to be thankful in all circumstances. Uh, so what does that look like? Uh, for those that don't know our story, uh, our first pregnancy actually ended in a miscarriage. Um, and the grief and the pain that followed in the days and the weeks 
uh, was difficult and painful. Uh, but however, in the midst of loss and pain, um, Hannah and I actively chose to turn our hearts to God. We let his word speak life into us in a time where we all felt lifeless. We prayed that if God wanted a child for our life, for us, he would make it happen. Flash forward to a few months later, um, Hannah and her family found out that Ange uh, would be transitioning to an end-of-life care. Ange's days were numbered, and it was yet another storm in our life. Then a day after Ange came home, uh, we found out that we were pregnant again. It felt like a massive storm in a season where uh, it was just never ending, and being thankful in that moment was very difficult. However, we saw God's hand in every situation of our life, in both the big and the small, and we trusted that he has our life, and he trusted he works in for our good. In Romans 8, 28, it says, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, and for those who are called according to his purpose. So, Max just turned two yesterday, and we're very thankful that God gave us him in our life. Um, so we quickly realized that being thankful was not just in the moment, and it was not just in the good times, but instead a way of life. It was a constant recognition of his abundant blessing in both the big and the small. We still look back, and although it was tough, we're grateful that God took us to the journey because it built our faith, and it also strengthened our relationship with Jesus. And I know many of you sitting here today are uh, going through tough times in life. It could be finances, it could be health issues, um, it could be relationships. And, you know, being thankful is the last thing on your mind, um, or being grat grat grateful to God is the last thing on your mind. Um, however, God is reminding us to come to him with an attitude of gratitude. And through that, we can build a relationship with God. And there's, there's times where it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be all happy times, right? We don't wake up in the morning and we're like, thank you, Jesus, for the hard times right away. But I think it's a, a posture with God. It's, it, it is a way of life and something that we have to work on every single day of our lives. Um, I will, I know I have a minute left, but it's almost done. Um, I'll end with what Marie D., an author, said. As we seek reasons to, f to be grateful, our hearts become attuned to his presence and love for us. Through gratitude, we can embrace the satisfaction of knowing that we are loved unconditionally by God, who cares for us deeply. Thank you. Thank you, David. That was great. And last, but certainly not least... We have Naomi. Good morning. When I was 17, I was a brand new um, student at Bible College. It was my very first week, and I was invited um, to go to a, near, a local nearby church. It was quite large that I had never been to before, and it was, it was quite different from the church that I had been raised in. And once arriving there, we went into a beautiful time of praise and worship. Um, we were just, you know, worshiping the Lord. And at some point during the service, I was, I was worshiping. I was lost in praise. And without even intending to, I remember I kept saying, please. And it, it didn't make sense. I couldn't have explained to you what I was asking for. It just, I, my strong memory is just saying, please, please, over and over. Something in my spirit was reaching out to the spirit of God. Um, nobody came to pray for me. Nobody was speaking to to me. Nobody was on the stage speaking about the Holy Spirit or anything at that moment. Um, it was just a, a time of music and song for everyone else. But as I had my hands raised to heaven and my heart was just, was just crying out to God, um, I felt like it was like electricity filled my whole body. Um, I began to weep. I was filled with great joy. And again, without intending to, I began to say thank you over and over and over again. Um, I had no theological context for what had happened to me. I just, I had received what I didn't even know to ask for, what to ask for. I had given, been given the gift of the Holy Spirit coming upon me. And just like the disciples in the upper room in the book of Acts, my immediate spirit-led response was gratitude. 
Now, why do I tell that story? Um, because Pastor Nick instructed us to share a story. Um, I'm kidding. That's not why. It's because, <laughs> um, because God calls us to be a people of thanksgiving. And I've seen in my own life how he enables us with his spirit and his word to be people who overflow with gratitude. Um, gratitude can change our thought patterns, our day, our relationships, even our lives. We know this. We've, people have been preaching about it. We've read the magazines. We've listened to podcasts. We know that gratitude is good and it's hard. It can sometimes, a lot of times, it can feel impossible to, to express thanksgiving. We're instructed to be thankful over and over in God's word. And we are also given the supernatural ability to give thanks. I believe that it is the Holy Spirit dwelling within and, and infilling us who empowers us to become people of gratitude. The Psalms are filled with passages like this from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And as I was reading that psalm, a, very, a question that came up for me was, what happens when we struggle to be grateful? When our present circumstances are not ones we would like to give thanks for. As David and Jenny so um, well illustrated so well. And I would contend, like they would, that we should thank him anyway and ask him to fill us with his spirit. It is the Holy Spirit of God dwelling within us who empowers us to become people of gratitude and praise. The psalm shows us, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. We enter God's presence with thanksgiving because God is good and worth our thanks, whether we feel it or not. I want to read from Ephesians 5:15 as well. It says, "Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, giving thanks always and with for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus." The prior verses in this chapter of Ephesians detail very practically how we are to live our lives. When we walk in step with the Spirit of God, we put off our old ways of life and we put on a new way of living, which includes gratitude. I believe that gratitude is a language of heaven, and this is why when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, gratitude is just what poured out of me. I've had that experience many times since then in worship and, and being filled with the Spirit of having gratitude bubble out of me. Um, the Holy Spirit who has been sent from heaven to dwell within us, we will become, gives us the ability to become people of thanksgiving. But the reality remains that often we are not. We want to be grateful. We want to give God thanks and worship more than we worry. But sometimes the reality of what's happening in our minds, what's happening in our heart, is not what we want. I know that's true for me a lot of the time. So what do we do? How do we become people of the thanksgiving that we are called to be? When we struggle to be grateful, draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Ask for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Ask for prayer. Please, please ask for prayer. Invite others in. Pray the Psalms. Pray Psalm 100 or any of the Psalms, most of them. Press into praise and worship when you don't feel like it and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit to come upon you and fill you with gratitude because it is the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, bringing his word to life, who empowers us to become people of gratitude. Didn't they do a great job? Yeah. Let's give them all five of them a great bit of appreciation. Um, I bought some notes at my Bible, not because I'm going to preach, don't worry. That's okay. If that happened, it would be here way too long. Um, but I did just want to give a couple of words of wrap up. Um, first of all, um, before I get into wrap up, I just want to express my thanks to each of you um, for the work that you've put in, the time that you've put in, the effort that you've put in over the last month or so in preparing for today. And thank you for giving of yourselves this morning, particularly where you've been vulnerable and shared your own stories with us. Um, that's it's a precious thing to do. Um, and I trust that each of us are able to appreciate more their teaching on gratitude because of how they have given themselves. So thank you for doing that. I just want to honor you for that. Um, quick wrap up then. I'm going to try and quickly summarize and then I have a few questions for you just to quickly consider. So Les uh, spoke to us about recognizing the gifts 
that God has given us. Gratitude for God's gifts. Uh, recognizing the blessings that we receive from God, allowing them to stir up gratitude within us. Jenny extended that idea, recognizing that it's good for us and right for us to give thanks for the gifts that God has given, but then also uh, recognizing that we need to also give thanks in the midst of those situations that are difficult, Uh, the hard times, the struggle and the strife. Recognizing who God is, is the way to gratitude is the way to be thankful in all circumstances. Ryan talked about how our generosity with the, God, with the gifts that God has given us, the generosity that flows from that place of recognizing God's goodness to us leads to and results in this overflow, mentioned the, the ripple effect um, of thanksgiving and gratitude to God and recognizing how that process kind of works its way out as we are generous in the things that God has given us and how that works itself out in thanksgiving, not only within our own lives, but in the lives of others. David talked about gratitude being a way of life, a constant recognition of God's blessing in both the big and the small, recognizing that how God can bring purpose even out of our pain and how that builds our relationship with God and with Jesus. Naomi uh, finished Acknowledging again that sometimes it can be hard to give thanks, but encouraging us that it's the Holy Spirit, and forgive me if I quote you wrong on this, it's the Holy Spirit dwelling within us who enables us and empowers us to be people of gratitude. Um, I think it's fair to say they said it much better than I did, Uh, but I just wanted to kind of remind us as we've listened to the five of them, these this thread of gratitude, this thread of thanksgiving that has run through these talks, that we are called to be people of gratitude. We're called to be people who live lives of gratitude. We're called to give thanks for God's good gifts. We're called to give thanks because of who he is. We're called to give thanks even in the worst of circumstances. Why? Because God is good. He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our thanks. We can take that back to the display of his love for us, that he gave his one and only son to save us. He gave and has given us his Holy Spirit to make us new, to make us those who can give thanks, as Naomi reminded us. One of the things that occurred to me as I was listening to those uh, five talks was that sense that God calls us to give thanks in all circumstances, not necessarily for all of our circumstances. And we give thanks in the circumstances because of who he is and because he has made us new people by the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. So I want to ask you, what is it that God has been saying to you today as you've heard these talks? Because yes, it's good for us to come and it's wonderful for us to have the family share with us. But ultimately, the word of God is there to teach us, sometimes to correct us, to build us up and encourage us. So what is it that God has been saying to you today through these talks? Is he challenging you to be more thankful? Are there circumstances in which you need to give thanks, even if it's not for the circumstances themselves? And how might you do that? Do you need his spirit to fill you afresh? To help you to be more thankful? What is it that God is saying to you today? Would you just take hold of that? That you don't walk away from here and go, well, that was great, but now I've forgotten it. But actually allow what God has said to you today. Allow the things he's speaking into your heart to take root and bear fruit. We're not going to add to the teaching at all. Just want to encourage you, allow what God has said to bear fruit. And I'd love to close by standing together. I've got two prayers that I want to quickly pray. The first is that we always give opportunity at Numa for people who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior to be able to invite him into their lives as Lord and Savior. 
And it might be that there's someone in the room, or it might be that there's someone watching online who has never really had a full appreciation of God's goodness before. And maybe there's something that's been stirred in you as you've heard these testimonies of God's goodness, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. Maybe you've felt a prompting inside or a stirring in your heart that is God trying to get your attention this morning. And the last book of the Bible, Revelation, gives us this picture of Jesus knocking at a door. And his promise is, if you open the door to me, I will come in. And so maybe today God is trying to get your attention. He's knocking at your door. And so if that's you, I want to invite you to say a prayer with me. Because as I mentioned a moment ago, God's greatest gift is perhaps that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him, in Jesus, believing in Jesus as the son of God, believing in Jesus as the one who gave his life to pay the price for our sins, and who was resurrected from the dead to give us new life. If we believe in him, the promise is that we shall not perish in hell, but we shall have eternal life, fullness of life, both here on earth and in heaven for all of eternity. So I want to invite you, if that's you, either in the room or again, if you're online, to say a prayer, admitting that you've done wrong, believing that Jesus paid the price for that wrong, and committing your life to live for him, inviting him into your life. So this first prayer, you can pray this prayer with me and make the words your own as you say them. Father God, I confess that I have done wrong. I have sinned. I recognize that that separates me from you. And so today I turn away from that sin and I turn to you. Thank you that you gave your son Jesus to die on a cross, to pay the price for my sin. And thank you that he rose from the dead to give me new life. Today I receive your forgiveness. I receive the gift of new life and I open the door that you might come in. Help me by the power of your spirit to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you did pray that prayer, if you're in the room, you can come and let Sarah or I know. If you're watching online, click the link below the video. Let us know that way. We'd love to help you in your journey of faith. But I want to pray one more prayer. And that's that God's spirit will make us people of gratitude. To invite him into our lives. And so if you want that, if you want to live a life of gratitude, and you know you need some help with that sometimes, maybe you just want to posture yourself in a way to receive that. For me personally, when I want to receive something from God and I feel that he might want to bless me, I put my hands out as though I'm ready to receive a gift of some kind. You don't have to do that. There's no magic in that. But it's good to posture ourselves one way or another. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. We thank you that you're faithful. We thank you that you are loving. We thank you that you are just. We thank you that you are true. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your discipline. We thank you for your correction. We thank you that you love us so, so deeply. And we thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. We thank you, too, for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And Father, right now I ask that for those of us who recognize our need for your help, that we might be more thankful. That we recognize our need for you to help us live lives of gratitude. Would you give us once again that gift of your Holy Spirit? If you've never received the Holy Spirit before, it might be the first time you've received the Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit, I invite you and welcome you to come and move in us. To pour yourself out into us. Fill us and help us to live these new lives. Help us to live these lives of gratitude that we might rejoice always.
pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. Don't allow us to walk away from here today without your word changing us and shaping us, without your spirit filling us afresh. Watch over us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.